It is another super snowy day. It is very cold outside and I'm sorry if you can hear the wind absolutely howling. Hi, call me Mint and I really wanna make more arts and crafts videos in addition to the kind of experiences I've been vlogging and this is a little bit of both. So I think it will work out to be really, really fun. I took a dice making class at a local dice shop. They offer them for $40. We made two pairs of dice and it was a really great experience. Taking a dice making class is just about the second most perfect bonding experience with your D&D party. The number one first most important and perfect and special D&D party bonding activity is painting matching squad jackets, obviously. All right. I didn't get to film a lot of it because resin for casting is very caustic and dangerous and I wanted to prioritize being safe and not getting resin on my phone or camera. So I have some clips and then um, more of the video is going to be me talking about it. I thought this would be a cool time to ink some dice and talk about the experience. First you make a basic set. That means the font is block letters, very simple. And then you are given access to the wall of glitters and dried flowers and pigments and shimmers. And you make a second set with a different font that you choose. This first set of dice I made themed after the beholder on my jacket that I showed off earlier. So I'm gonna ink most of the numbers in like a silvery gray and then the high face in a fluorescent pink. It will be black light reactive and I think that'll look really cool. There are many, 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 many super professional dice makers that know super a lot about doing this stuff. Um, I think this class is great because I went with a friend who is a hobbyist dice maker and they have a lot more experience at this than me. And I think we both had really fulfilling experiences where they learned tips and tricks and I learned some basics and had fun and we all got dice to take home. <laughs> And that's the real uh, good thing about it. Each person had their own spread out, socially distanced little workstation with all of the materials they would need, except for the colors that we obviously Ooh, got to choose ourselves. We used KS resin and the instructor portioned it out for us to make sure everybody got equal amounts so they would cure properly. I chose two really similar bluish violet and a more purpley violet shades of mica mineral pigment the same stuff i use this fairy glitter actually to make this beautiful indigo hue with some striation i felt like the instructor said striation um 50 times in a two-hour class which was very funny but it sure did make that word stick in my head striation look at the striation we used a lighter to pop bubbles after pouring them into the molds, which was a fun and satisfying step. I want to eat these so bad. I want to eat them. I know they're just little tablets of color to show the pigment and what it looks like when it's saturated in the resin. I want to eat it so bad. <laughs> Here's the glitter wall with all of the things you can put in. Oh, I am all over the place. This is really bad camera work. I was too in the moment and excited. There's pigments, there's inks, there's glitters. Oh my God, let me get at that glitter. So many glitter, that glitter. These are tea kits. The dried flowers that I chose to put in my dice are just herbal tea. The little petals of a red plum flower. So cute. I really like the font I chose. And here it is all in. I had to use the lighter a lot because the petals caught air and dragged it in so I really had to go over mine again and again and again with the lighter and luckily these were all cured in a pressure pot very important you are so cute hello there was a shop dog Since casting and finishing are kind of different processes, um, the instructor put them all in a pressure pot to cure overnight and then they were ready to be picked up the next day. He did fill any voids or gaps 
but included a little kit of Zona papers to polish and sand them on our own. So this is me finally finding time to polish them. Since I chose to keep my dice translucent, I felt like taking the time to polish them was a really, really important step. Okay. Got some brushes. Got a little bit of a wet palette set up. Got the dice I'm going to be inking. This is my one cap. Just one D20 mold. It's the only one that I own. I thought it would just be handy to show off. Since silicone molds are consumable items that do eventually wear out, one really cool tip from the instructor was to keep a notebook of how many times you can pull from each mold and what works and what doesn't. The instructor suggested using plastic or resin-based paints like for model painting, and so that's what I went with. And oh my gosh, inking was way harder than I thought it would be. And a little bit more time consuming, honestly. I like the trend of making the high face a different color or a different image. I think that's very cool. Um, I played with really basic dice for a really long time and I never really collected them until my friend got into making them and I think this is going to be my dice goblin year. Um, I inked one dice up close. I'm going to continue doing it from here because I like to be like this close to what I'm working on and it doesn't work with the camera in between. But I want to talk about the dice making class while I do it, because I think that would be fun for me. It felt a little bit like summer camp, doing it with all my friends. We each had our little setups. There's only room for um, five people in the whole class. So it's it was pretty much the back room of the dice shop with um, me and my friends. And we used resin with a pot life of about 90 minutes which is pretty generous work time but it also meant that things like inclusions or chunky glitter would have a lot of time to sink and settle so for the purpose of this class we kept it pretty casual because of the nature of casting dice being like a two-day thing and this was like a one-time sit down thursday evening class he did offer, like, I will polish and ink them for another extra $15 if you don't feel crafty in doing that, which is very cool to offer as a service. However, I like doing a little bit of a craft. I saw a set of dice that had half of the numbers, like the top half was one color and the bottom half was another color. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I'm definitely going to do that when I take my dice home and ink them. Because since it happens in a dice shop, uh, the instructor has tons of pairs of dice or tons of sets of dice that he made or that uh, other people working in the shop made that you can look at for inspiration. There's different fonts to choose from. There's different inclusions. There's different glitters and pigments. It's a really cool place to be. Um, and I'm looking at this now and I'm kind of thinking, wow, I really admire the skill level in painting half of the number one color and half of the number another color. Because now that I'm doing it, I don't think I would be able to two tone the numbers half and half horizontally like that. Me as a complete beginner, I have, like I said, I have one d20 cat mold that I have cast just for fun and that's it and I'm gonna clean this all up later probably because I'm gonna take some pictures of the dice and show them off now
me about your favorite set of dice, where you got it or if you made it. Tell me about your favorite dice makers that you follow on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whatever. Um, because now that I've done this, I really want to like watch a bunch more dice content creation or dice, cre dice creation content. It's both, honestly. It's Have you checked out if your local dice or tabletop shop offers cool stuff like this? Because I heard about it from a friend, but I never would have even thought about it otherwise. As always, thank you for watching. Um, if you like my content, go ahead and follow my Kofi, where you can leave me a little digital tip or buy me a coffee, which would be great right now. It is, would be really cozy to have a coffee. Um, thank you so much for watching and as always, ta! Till next time. I took this class at a local shop that specializes in making dice. I'm not gonna like dox myself because it is fairly local, but I'll show some pictures from their Instagram and they're cool.